Good morning everybody, it's Christopher, the Climate Guy. Today's video is a special Grand Solar Minimum Report for Hurricane Florence. Florence continues to weaken as it approaches shore, but that doesn't make it any less dangerous. Wind speeds are now at 90 knots or 103 miles an hour, making it a high-end Category 2 storm. Minimum central pressure is at 955 millibars, which is again showing signs that the hurricane is weakening. The main causes for this weakening is the wind shear. They got winds blowing northeast from South Carolina. They're blowing from the southwest, but they're blowing in the direction northeast. They got winds blowing from the east, blowing west from the hurricane. And then the hurricane is pulling in air from southeastern Virginia, which is, again, both of the red arrow and the green arrow are demonstrating air that's opposing the flow of the blue arrow. And that's causing the hurricane to weaken in the northern half of the storm. And you can really see the storm weakening on the infrared satellite. And one of the reasons for this is really, again, that south, that south, the wind, the wind coming in from the south, south, from the northwest, which is blowing southeast, you can see the you can see that there's pockets of air trying to enter the center of the hurricane, and that's disrupting the flow, and that's going to cause the hurricane to kind of stall for about 24 hours. And then in the northern half of the storm, you can really see the convection taking place in those darker areas. So let's take a look at the 5 p.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center. We see that they have now picked up the track that. Us first watch forecasters had previously shown to you all a couple days ago. That's the track that we shown. It was pretty close to what we thought. Now, you can see how the hurricane goes south and then west and then north. That's what we think is going to happen. It's going to become a tropical storm, then it's going to become a tropical depression. So they picked up on this really well. And they got a hurricane, they got a hurricane warning from the Outer Banks down to Surfside Beach. So, that's a pretty widespread area um, for this hurricane. It's just very dangerous, so I hope everybody evacuated. And most of the models are now agreeing on where the storm will track from here on out. As we had predicted previously, the storm will track slightly south, then west, then north. And the GFS actually shows the forecast to track pretty well. I think the GFS did pretty well in this. However, I think the GFS goes a little too far west than the, than the storm's actually going to go. But the GFS, I will have to say, performed pretty well at the end of this uh, storm, as the rest of the storm, I think the GFS played out pretty well. Now, on the right's the Canadian model. I'm not sure what they have going on here. They got a bunch of different scattered things that look like spaghetti noodles uh, exploded all over the southeast. I'm not sure what's going on there, and ain't, and ain't nobody got time for that. So we're going to move on. So how's this storm going to play out? Well, this is our forecast. The storm should, the storm should, the storm's making landfall right now near Wilmington, North Carolina. And within the next few hours, I think it's just going to start stalling. And my forecast agrees pretty well with the National Hurricane Center. And I think they nailed it on the head. So to close out uh, this morning into the rest of the day, and possibly into tomorrow, Florence should stall for about 24 hours. If not, a little bit less than that. Before making direction before moving a little bit south uh, just to the north just to the southwest of Myrtle Beach where it becomes a tropical storm and that's by 2 o'clock a.m. Saturday and by 2 p.m. Saturday the storm is just starting to move west a little bit and by 2 o'clock p.m. Sunday the storm is going to be on the state line of North Carolina and South Carolina and it's going to become a tropical depression and by 2 o'clock p.m. Tuesday this storm really gets its act together and starts moving north fast uh, by 2 o'clock p.m. Tuesday, it's going to be in New York State as a tropical depression and some very severe thunderstorms, I think. So for the weekend, though, for the Mid-Atlantic, Northeast, parts of the Southern Northeast, and the Southeast, and Midwest, everybody is going to be affected by the storm. We're going to be seeing a lot of, we're going to see very high wind gusts. Wind gusts over uh, 40, 50, 60, maybe even 70 miles an hour for parts of Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Wind gusts will be reaching between 20, 30, and 40 miles an hour for Kentucky, Tennessee, West Virginia, and Virginia. 
and as far north as Pennsylvania could see wind gusts up into the 30s and 40s. Um, this is what the models show, but I think they could possibly, possibly be higher than that as the storm rolls through. Um, and by, t again, Tuesday. So this is going to be, again, it's, it's a slow-moving storm. Um, don't get me wrong on that. Hurricane Hazel in 1954 was a very fast-moving storm. Uh, that didn't allow air to get pulled into the center of the storm to start weakening it. That's what's causing, as we showed, as I showed you all earlier, Hurricane Florence is a slow-moving storm, and you can see that wind coming in from southeastern Virginia into the center of the storm, and that's really disrupting the flow, weakening it. And so, but Hazel, back in 1954, was a fast-moving storm, and it strengthened because it moved fast, and it didn't pull in air from um, other places into the center of the storm. Now, if we go back to the wind speeds again, this is just going to be destructive, especially for parts of Georgia, North Carolina, and definitely South Carolina. Uh, inland, you're really going to see the uh, pickup in wind gusts and everything. And along the coast as well, uh, very high wind gusts there right now uh, into the 80s and possibly 90s. Uh, even hundreds, I wouldn't be surprised if you all saw wind gusts then. Uh, there. But if we continue going through the rest of the rest of the week into the weekend and then into early next week, um, again, it's going to be a pretty windy weekend. And guess what else it's going to be? It's going to be a pretty rainy weekend. Uh, we're going to be seeing some impressive rain totals. Rain totals over 25 inches across North and South Carolina. I'm sorry, y'all, but y'all are going to get drenched. And in North Carolina, again, North Carolina, South Carolina, it looks like an apocalypse there, but it's not. It's just rain, and it's possibly going to be record-breaking rain. Parts of eastern Tennessee and Kentucky and parts of southern West Virginia and parts of Georgia are also going to be seeing impressive rain totals, maybe up to a foot. Now, northern Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania are also going to be seeing excessive rain totals. Now, some of this rain is going to be from afternoon thunderstorms that are going to be making their way through uh, today, tonight, and tomorrow. But, however, however, the hurricane is going to have impact on this as well. And the models don't show a whole lot right now. It shows about six inches of rain. But I think we could be seeing up to a foot of rain in isolated spots as far north as um, Frederick, Maryland, into um, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Maybe even Philadelphia might see some more rain than they show. Um, but the models, again, aren't always accurate. you got to rely on more of um, what the state, the state of the atmosphere, what it's doing. And I think that you're going to be seeing a lot more rain than what the models show for the, the northern areas. But definitely North and South Carolina, you are, are going to be seeing impressive rain totals, possibly record-breaking. And heads up Al Gore. Yeah, Nashville could also see some rain. A good bit of it, too. So, heads up, Al. Of course, he's probably going to blame this storm on climate change just because every storm is blamed on climate change, but that's just how the media rolls. Please check on loved ones and please check on family and friends and everybody you know. Please be sure they're safe and everything that they need they got. And please um, pray for them to get through this and wish them luck. If you enjoyed the content, then please follow us on our social platforms and please Find us our, on our website, ish2050.com. And also, consider subscribing if you really enjoy the content. Be safe, everybody.